So what is white Gaussian noise? And here's the Gaussian distribution. And for more information on Gaussian noise, see my other video, uh, which is in the link below. Uh, this is the general Gaussian shape. And for noise, the mean is zero, as we discuss in that video. Uh, the focus today is on white Gaussian noise. So let's think about noise as a process. This was as a random variable. And what is a random process? So here's a uh, time function where we've taken time samples of noise. And uh, we take noise at regular time samples. In a digital communication system, this would be the symbol rate. And maybe the noise has these sorts of values that I'm drawing here. And this is a random process where we've sampled the noise. And each time sample is a random variable, is the outcome of a random variable. So at each time sample, the noise has a distribution of this shape where mu equals zero. And this is a random process. So for random processes, we have, uh, if we have an autocorrelation function. And in this case for noise, the noise, as we discussed uh, previously, the noise is independent from sample to sample because it's coming from electrons moving in an amplifier, for example. So let's look at the correlation function, the autocorrelation function for this random process. This is a random process and this equals, uh, by definition, the expected value of the uh, random variable at that time multiplied by the random variable at a delayed time or a time in the future plus tor. Okay, this is the autocorrelation function. And when these are independent random variables, which is what it is for noise, then this is going to be equal to a delta function because the, if they're independent and uh, they're zero mean, then uh, we're going to have a delta function as the autocorrelation function. They're not related to each other at different times. That's because they're independent. They're independent because they're noise. So it's a delta function. So here's the shape of the, of the delta function here, the autocorrelation function. It's a delta function. Uh, that means for all those delays tor, uh, they equal zero, except for at the zeroth delay. And for that reason, we're going to label this height, and we'll see why that is, see what this means in a minute. But we're going to label that n naught divided by two. I'll say the divided by two in a minute. But the n naught is because it is the autocorrelation for the noise n at a for the tor equals zero. That's why we call it n naught, n zero or n naught. That's the height of that delta function. And if we look in this uh, spectral domain, in the frequency domain, uh, this is the gives us the power spectral density, and the power spectral density is, as you know, the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. And the Fourier transform of a delta is, of course, a constant. So if I mean, thinking of noise in the frequency domain, this was in the time domain, a random process. So we can't take the, uh, the Fourier transform of that random process for every single realization, because there's just so many realizations, because every single time is a random variable. But we can do it on average, and that's what the power spectral density is. And this is uh, the power spectral density for the noise. Because this was a delta function, the Fourier transform of a delta function is a constant, and that height there is n naught divided by 2. Now, we see the divided by 2 here because we're plotting positive frequencies and negative frequencies. Uh, that's why we put it divided by 2. So the area under here is going to be, if we, uh, if we have, do the area over here, we're doing both sides. So that cancels out the divided by 2. Um, and this is why it's called white noise, because all the frequencies are equally represented. And that's exactly the same as what happens in white light, where all the different colors of the rainbow are equally represented. So that's why it's called white Gaussian noise. And just the last thing to uh, close the loop for the Gaussian part, with the mean equals zero, we know that the variance of the random variable uh, is, uh, I've used x over here because this is a general distribution, but of course n 
uh, when we put n, use n instead of in place of x and set mu equal to zero, then the variance we know uh, is equal to sigma squared for the Gaussian uh, shape. This is the label in here. When you use this equation for the Gaussian, sigma squared is the variance. And this equals the second moment minus the uh, square of the mean. Of course, the mean equals zero. So this equals the second moment, which is the autocorrelation function with tor equals zero, which is n naught on two. So the n naught on two, which we see in the spectral density and the autocorrelation function, that value equals the sigma squared. So when you're doing Gaussian noise calculations, and if you're using this shape here and you're looking for bit error rates, uh, and you're often integrating under the tail of the Gaussian, so you're dealing with, with the sigma, or sigma squared, then it relates to the power spectral density and n naught by, n, by being equal to n naught divided by two. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and like the video to help others find the video. And I also now have a web page uh, which is in the description below, uh, iancollings.com, where you'll see a full listing of all the videos on the channel.